Hi everybody, Alex the Player from Expert Forex and in today's video we're going to be talking about hedging, hedging strategies and how to use simple hedging and how to use many currencies in a hedging strategy. Now when the US brought a hedging restrictions in, many Forex traders were really panicking but there's lots of really easy ways to get around that hedging problem and I'll show you how you can use multiple currencies to hedge. So let's get straight into it. Now just some basics before we start. Every currency cross has a base currency and a quoted currency. So when you are for instance buying the Euro USD, you are actually doing two things. You are buying the Euro and you are selling the USD at the same time. You are hoping that the Euro will increase in value relative to the USD either by the euro increasing or the USD weakening or a combination of that. So a lot of people don't realize that when they are trading across, they are actually entering two transactions at the same time. So let's take an example of the traditional hedge that occurs. So let's say you are in a buy in the euro USD. Now to hedge, all you have to do is enter a sell in the euro USD. That way, no matter where the price of the euro USD goes, you will not make a loss or a profit. You will have hedged your current position. So let's analyze that in a little bit more detail. Your original position was a buy in the euro USD. So you were buying the euro and you were selling the USD. Then you entered another transaction where you sold the euro and bought the USD. Now as you can see, because there's a buy and a sell in both those currencies, it is a perfect hedge. Now I'm going to show you a technique of using multiple currencies to hedge. And you might have to watch this a few times for the penny to drop if you haven't seen this before. So just remember that when you're buying a particular currency cross, you're always buying one currency and selling another currency. And when you're buying, you're always buying the first currency in the cross. When you're selling, you're always selling the first currency in the cross. So that's one of the checks that you need to make. Now let's take an example. Let's say you buy the USD yen and you buy the Euro USD. Effectively, you are buying the Euro Yen because the USD parts cancel each other out. So in order to hedge, you need to sell the Euro Yen. Now those three transactions together form a hedge. Now why do they form a hedge? Because on the Euro, you have both a buy and a sell. On the USD, you have both a buy and a sell. And on the yen, you have a buy and a sell transaction. So it is a perfect hedge. And that's an example of using multiple currencies to hedge your transactions. So in this example, if you were in a buy of the USD yen, all you would have to do is open a buy in the Euro USD and a sell in the Euro yen. And then your USD yen transaction would be hedged. Now you can play around with those, you can hedge any three of those transactions by following that formula. There's a bit of maths involved, so you need to get a pen and paper out and cancel the, the currencies out as you're doing these transactions. But the big trick is to make sure that your buy and sell transactions cancel each other out. Now on this slide I'm showing a number of hedging alternatives. There are about 20 there and you can play around with those combinations and they, as I said earlier, they apply to any three of the currencies mentioned there. So if you're buying one, you need to look at what combination you need to use to hedge that particular transaction using multiple currencies. Not that complicated once you get it going. Now next I want to deal with some hedging misconceptions. Often I hear from traders, oh, my deal is going bad. So instead of it hitting my stop, all I'm going to do is hedge the deal. Now, once you've already built up a big loss, hedging the deal is just freezing the deal, basically. Your loss won't go away. All you're doing is extending the inevitable. 
By entering a hedge, you're also paying the broker an extra spread and exposing yourself to overnight charges. The other thing is that once you've hedged a negative transaction, the only way to make a profit is to unhedge the, the, the transaction. And that entails you making a trading decision. So you've got to unhedge at a time when you think one of those two transactions are going to go favorable. So that involves another trading to the transaction. So in the end, if you are making a loss in a transaction, it is actually better to just take the loss, let it hit your stop and move on and find other transactions. You might find the same transaction that you would have made to unhedge the transaction, but you would have saved yourself a spread and overnight charges. So many of you that are watching this video and have learned how to hedge, We'll find this next slide very strange. My recommendation is don't hedge. Do nothing. Hedging makes the broker rich because you're paying extra spreads. It also makes the broker rich because you might be exposing yourself to overnight charges. Hedging just freezes your existing situation. In the end, you have to make another trading decision, which you could have made anyway if you had closed the original one. So unless you really have a very good strategy and you know what you're doing, my recommendation regarding hedging is don't do it. Do nothing. And I'm really talking about hedging entailing the same size lot sizing because there are some strategies that, that vary lot sizes that make the hedging out of balance and create profitable situations that way. But for normal hedging, rather don't do it. Now having said that we have a number of hedging EAs strangely enough but you need to look at the reasons why hedging is used in these particular EAs and I'll just go through them very quickly. We have our time of day hedged EA. Now what that EA does is at a certain time of day every day it opens a buy and a sell. So that can be seen as a hedge transaction but in fact the reason for opening a buy and a sell is not to hedge. It's to show that in forex trading, it doesn't matter in the long run which direction you trade because it matters how you manage your open transactions. Now, strangely enough, we open a buy and a sell at the same time every day and overall this EA goes profitable. Now as you can see on your screen we have had over a thousand clients buying this EA and only three and actually four last week there was a fourth claimed that they were unprofitable in, during the testing period of this EA. So this is a very powerful EA that uses what appears to be hedging but it doesn't it's basically saying I'm going to buy, open a buy and a sell to prove that managing the transaction after the entry is more important than the entry itself. So it's not true hedging, but it, it appears to be hedging. Then the next EA also uses hedging concepts. Now, again, it's the hedging is done here for different reasons than trying to control profits and losses. Here, the hedging is done because when you are at a grid level, you want a chance to be profitable no matter which way the price moves. Now, the only way of doing that is having a buy and a sell at the grid level that you at. So if it goes to the next grid level upwards, you want to cash in your buy. If it goes to your, the next grid level downwards, you want to cash in on your sell. So that is why a buy and a sell is entered into when using this particular system. And the, the reason why this one makes money is because the price revisits the same price level so often during a trading day that the cash ins outweigh the possibility of losses. So although it appears again that hedging is being used, it, it isn't hedging in the true sense in that the reason for the buy and the sell at the same price is not really to control profit and losses which is the main reason for what one would do hedging for it is to make sure that there is a profitable opportunity on every particular move very interesting eas came out of the hedging concept but 
in both cases, it starts out with a buy and a sell, not entering a hedge after the event to try and control the loss or the profit or lock in the profit. So again, if you don't really know what you're doing about hedging, there are some profitable hedging concepts, but overall best not to do it because you are going to be making other people rich. Now, if you're interested in any of the two EAs that I've mentioned in this video, there is a special offer to my subscribers on YouTube, a 50% uh, off offer. So how you take advantage of this offer is you buy the EA at full price, send me an email saying I am a YouTube subscriber, I'll check whether you're one of my subscribers and then I will refund you 50% of your purchase price. So that's a very special offer to YouTube subscribers. Now, if you've liked this video, please click on the like button. If you are not a subscriber already, please subscribe to my channel. And if you are a subscriber, make sure that you have clicked on the bell to make sure that you get notified of any new videos that I produce. So from me, Alex Aploy, cheerio.